Now, we're going to learn how to solve the moment of inertia just by using our calculators. Now, for the first step, we need to store all of the values of IOX or IOY depending on what you're trying to solve. Now, for this one, since we have solved the moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis, then we'll need to store this value, this value, and also this one. And so we have 150 times 200 cubed over 36 for the triangle. So let's store this one into A. And then for our second area, we have for the semicircle, IOX is 0.11 times 75 to the power of 4. And so let's store this into B. And then for the last one, we have the hollow circular section in which IOX is pi times 30 to the 4th divided by 64. And so we'll store this one into C. And so these are now our individual moment of inertias for each of the shapes. And so in our calculators, we need to go to mode and then go to stat. So press 3. And then let's pick one variable. So press 1. Now since we haven't turned on frequency, what you'll only see is this column X. However, for this calculator technique, we'll need to reveal the frequency column. And so to show that, press shift and then mode to go to setup and then you will get the screen. So press down, we need to go to stat. So press four and then let's press one to turn on frequency. So press one, you now have this. Now we have X and then frequency. And so you might ask, what are we gonna input for X and for frequency? Now for X, we need the distances. Depending on what you're trying to solve, you may have xn or yn. And so this is for the distances from the reference axis. And so just to reiterate, the column x will be for the distances from the reference axis to the centroid of each shape. Now how about for the frequency? For frequency, we need to input the areas. And so let's have this as 1, this one as 2, and this one as 3. And so for 1, we need the distance from the reference axis to the centroid of the shape. Now since our area 1 corresponds to the triangle, the distance from the reference axis up to this point, that's 400 over 3. And so we'll input 400 over 3. And then for the second shape, we have this figure, the semicircle, in which this is our y2, or the distance from the reference axis up to the centroid of the semicircle. So 200 plus 4 times 75 divided by 3 pi. And so let's just copy this one. This is for the second area, and then for the third one, we have y3 equal to 160. So we'll input 160, and then for the frequency, since we need the areas, we'll need to input the following. So we have, for the first one, 15,000, and then for the next one, we have 5625 divided by 2 multiplied by pi. And then for the last area, we have 225 pi. However, this is where you have to be careful. Remember that this portion, the circular section is a hollow portion and so we'll need to subtract that area in our calculation for the total area and so here in the frequency column we also need to use the negative sign for this area and so let's add minus and then we'll now input the following and so let's go to our calculators for the first one we have 400 over 3 and then here we have 200 plus 4 times 75 divided by 3 pi don't forget the parentheses and then press equals and then we have 160 and then for the frequencies we have 15,000 and then uh, by the way for the frequencies if you have stored the areas into variables then you can just use the letters it depends on you now for the second one we have 5625 divided by 2 multiplied by pi and then for the last one we have minus 225 pi so press equals now we're gonna press EC press EC and then press shift and then 1 and then we're gonna go to number 4. So press 4 for variance. Now here, n will correspond to our total area. Notice that this was our value for the total area. 23128.87 Now press shift 1 again and then go to variance. Bard x will correspond to the centroid. Now since in here, we were considering distances along y, then this will correspond to y bar. And so press 2 and then equals you will get 170.1465 which was this value 170.147 and then press shift 1 again go to variance now this is how we can calculate the moment of inertia recall that the moment of inertia is the summation of io depending on the axis this may be x or y and so let's just retain io and then plus ad squared now what corresponds to our area recall that this was n in our statistics function now how about D? Recall that for the standard deviation, we need to sum up x minus x bar 
squared. Notice that this is just like y and minus bar y for d. And so essentially, since this corresponds to the standard deviation, if we'll square this one, we can actually get the transfer formula. Now since a is to n, we have n, and then multiplied by the population standard deviation, sigma x, and then we're gonna square this one. Again, x minus x bar is just like y sub n minus y bar. Now what's gonna account for io? Remember that earlier, we stored all of these into a, b, and c. Uh, this one, this one, and also this one. So this is A, this is B, and this is C. And so this is the first step for the calculator technique. We need to store IOX or IOY for each shape. This was our first step, and for the second step, we plugged in the following values in our calculators. Now for the third step, this is what we are gonna do. We're gonna sum up all of the moment of inertias, and then we're gonna add the transfer formula, which will be solved by the calculator. Again, A corresponds to N, and then d squared corresponds to this expression. And so for IO, we need to sum up everything that we have stored. And then you have to take note here that if the area is a hollow section, then we also need to subtract IO for that particular section. And so again, we have A, B, and C. So IO will now become A plus B minus C. Because again, the circular section is a hollow section. And so we already have the following. And so here, we're gonna press 1 to get n, and then multiply it by press shift 1 again, and then 4, let's go to number 3, which is the population standard deviation. So press 3, and then we're gonna square this one. However, this still accounts for the transfer formula. We still need to add a plus b and then minus c for the individual moment of inertia of each of the sections. And so a plus b minus c plus the transfer formula we're gonna get 906-49147.08 which is the same as this one and so this is essentially our last step and so let me just screenshot this one we now have this now for Canon calculators you can still input the following and then recall that earlier we stored all of these into 1, 2, 3 and then we stored all the areas into ABC so let's input 1 and then 2 and then recall 3 and then for the frequencies, we have A, B, and then C, but we're gonna use minus, so minus C. We now have the following. So press AC, and then it's a little bit different from this point, because instead of shift 1, we're gonna press apps. So press apps, and then we're gonna go to SVAR. So press 5, and then we'll have the following. So the transfer formula will be N, so press 1. And then multiplied by press apps again, go to 5, S var, and then press number 3. This is the population standard deviation, while well, this is the sample standard deviation. We need this one, number 3. And then squared, and then we're gonna add all of the individual moment of inertias. So we have 4, as we declared earlier, so recall 4, and then plus 5, and then minus what we stored in number 6. So minus, recall 6 plus the transfer formula, we'll still get the same value. And so this is our workaround. Now what if you want to calculate the moment of inertia about the centroidal y-axis? What you will input right here would still be the distances from the reference axis to the centroid of each shape. However, you will be considering the other axis. And so if we're gonna fast track this, the distance from the y-axis to the centroid of each figure will be the following. We have for the triangle, this will be one third of 150. So this is gonna be our x1, one third of 150. And then our x2 will correspond to the semicircle. And so this is from the y axis. Let's extend this one. Our x2 will be this distance. And so that's gonna be half of 150. So this is 75 mm. And then for the circular shape, we have 40 mm. This is our x3 because this is already the distance from the reference axis up to the centroid of the figure. So we have x1 equal to 150 over 3 and then our x2 is 75 and then our x3 is 40 mm. And so to get iy, we only need the following values. Let's just modify what we have inputted earlier. And so go to mode, I mean apps, and then stat, and then go to sd. So for the values of x, we now have 150 over 3 this value and then 75 and then 40 and then for the frequencies we still have a b and c so a b and c however we're still gonna use minus because this is a hollow portion so minus c we have the following and so press ac and then apps and then go to svar 
press 2, this is gonna be the value of barred x. And so essentially, the centroid of the total figure will be somewhere here because this was barred y. And then now, since we already have barred x from the reference axis, this distance is gonna be barred x. Now again, this is 170.47 mm, so that's why it's somewhere here. And then barred x is 59.86, so this is 59.86 mm. Let's copy this one, and then let's just rotate the figure. This is now our centroidal y-axis, which is located right here. And so again, this is barred x going to the centroidal y-axis, and this is barred y going to the centroidal x-axis, in which this is our reference axis for y, and this is for x. Now let's go back, go to apps, and then 5, press n, and then let's multiply this by the standard deviation, so apps and then s var press 3 and then squared and so if we're gonna add ioy for each shape to the transfer formula we're gonna get iy now ioy for the triangle is hb cubed divided by 36 and then ioy for the semicircle will be obtained using this formula pi r to the fourth divided by 8 so pi r to the fourth divided by 8 and then for the circular one ioy for the hollow circle, it's gonna be pi d to the fourth divided by 64. However, this is minus just like earlier. And so let's just actually store this one. Let's store this into f, the transfer formula. And then let's go back to comp. So again, n times x sigma n squared is stored into f. And so what we would need further would be the value of this one because we already have this. So plus we have this one plus this one minus this one. So mode one. And then for the triangle, we have hb cubed over 36, so 200 times 150 cubed over 36, and then plus pi r to the fourth over 8, so pi times 75 to the fourth divided by 8, and then minus pi d fourth over 64, so pi times the diameter of the circle is 30 mm, so 30 to the fourth divided by 64. And then we're gonna add f, which is the transfer formula. So this one plus this one minus this one plus f, that's gonna be our iy. So plus f, press equals, we have 343403300.82. And then this is mm to the fourth. So this is iyn. And so try to verify this value in your assignment. You may also press eng so that you will have this form. It just depends on you. But what's ideal is if you need this for further calculations, just store the value into another variable. Thank you.